Welcome to our channel. Let's start the day with kindness. And the end goodness will flowing from you to yourself. I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. The laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. Oh understand the universe, you must understand the language in which it's written, the language of mathematics. You can't teach anybody anything, only make them realize the answers are already inside them. And who can doubt that it will lead to the worst disorders when minds created free by God are compelled to submit slavishly to an outside will. When we are told to deny our senses and subject them to the whim of others. When people devoid of whatsoever competence are made judges over experts and are granted authority to treat them as they please. These are the novelties which are apt to bring about the ruin of commonwealths and the subversion of the state. Knowing yourself, that is the greatest wisdom. Nothing occurs contrary to nature except the impossible, and that never occurs. The prohibition of science would be contrary to the Bible which in hundreds of places teaches us how the greatness and the glory of God shine forth marvelously in all his works. If you could see the earth illuminated when you were in a place as dark as night, it would look to you more splendid than the moon. Where the senses fail us, reason must step in. Nature is relentless and unchangeable, and it is indifferent as to whether its hidden reasons and actions are understandable to man or not. Two truths cannot contradict one another. Long experience has taught me this about the status of mankind with regard to matters requiring thought, the less people know and understand about them, the more positively they attempt to argue concerning them. While on the other hand to know and understand a multitude of things renders men cautious in passing judgment upon anything new. Philosophy is written in that great book which ever lies before our eyes I mean the universe but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols, in which it is written. You cannot teach a man anything, you can only help him find it within himself. The vain presumption of understanding everything can have no other basis than never having understood anything. For anyone who had ever experienced just once the perfect understanding of one single thing, and had truly tasted how knowledge is accomplished, would recognize that of the infinity of other truths he understands nothing. In the long run my observations have convinced me that some men, reasoning preposterously, first establish some conclusion in their minds which, either because of its being their own or because of their having received it from some person who is their entire confidence, impresses them so deeply that one finds it impossible ever to get it out of their heads. Holy Scripture could never lie or err, its decrees are of absolute and inviolable truth. Mathematics is the key and door to the sciences. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. Scripture is a book about going to heaven. All truths are easy to understand once they are discovered, the point is to discover them. The greatest wisdom is to get to know yourself. Passion is the genesis of genius. The book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. The number of people that can reason well is much smaller than those that can reason badly. If reasoning were like calling rocks, then several reasoners might be better than one. But reasoning isn't like hauling rocks, it's like, it's like racing, where a single, galloping Barbary steed easily outruns a hundred wagon pulling horses. 
There are those who reason well, but they are greatly outnumbered by those who reason badly. Nature does not act by means of many things when it can do so by means of a few. Measure what can be measured, and make measurable what cannot be measured. In regard to the philosophers, if they be true philosophers, i.e., lovers of truth, they should not be irritated that the earth moves. Rather, if they realize that they have held a false belief, they should thank those who have shown them the truth, and if their opinion stands firm that the earth doesn't move, they will have reason to boast than be angered. With regard to matters requiring thought, the less people know and understand about them, the more positively they attempt to argue concerning them. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. See now the power of truth, the same experiment which at first glance seemed to show one thing, when more carefully examined, assures us of the contrary. T is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. In the future, there will be opened a gateway and a road to a large and excellent science into which minds more piercing than mine shall penetrate to recesses still deeper. To be humane, we must ever be ready to pronounce that wise, ingenious and modest statement I do not know. And, believe me, if I were again beginning my studies, I should follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. They seem to forget that the increase in known truths stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts, not their dimensions or destruction. Names and attributes must be adjusted to the essence of something, and not the essence of the name, because everything takes priority and the name comes after. Thank you for stopping by our channel. See you next time. Bye.